our guest is George Robinson, a cannabis consultant and grower. Um, his day job is CEO of RavenQuest Biomed, a producer, but he's also interim CEO of an outfit called Bonafi, which got into trouble with regulators over a mysterious cannabis delivery. Uh, he'll, he joins us now for a look at how he's trying to right the ship over there. Um, so Bonafi, tell us what went wrong. Yeah, so I think a lot of irregularity started to show up and, uh, and, and some of the frontline workers saying, we cannot do some of the things that are being done in this facility. What ended up happening is they brought in 210 uh, kilograms of, uh, I have to use the word, non-authorized cannabis. Uh, into the facility and they started uh, bringing up uh, this information. So that went up to the board. The board called me in. We uh, had to take care of releasing three of their senior executives and where we're at right now is just trying to figure out what else do we have to find in the business to get it uh, back to where uh, the shareholders really want this company to be, which is a premier cannabis company. So they're uh, Winnipeg based uh, right. and uh, they had to suspend their sales in Saskatchewan, for example, their legal sales. Yeah, actually we voluntarily stopped sales. Oh, okay, right? okay. We, the, the status of the license. Voluntarily, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. We did not lose any of the licensing once we came in. Health Canada looked at how we took care of uh, very decisively and immediately. Mm -hmm. how we took care of the problem that's in there. Uh, but then we voluntarily said that we won't sell until we can go back and look at all the documents and records to make sure that we know in the last seven or eight months since the senior management team was there, is there anything else that we have to know from uh, the record keeping side? Is there anything else that we have to sort of expose uh, before we should uh, get sales going again? So it's all been something that we've really well orchestrated with the province and with the feds. And does this seem to be been something like a desperate measure to fulfill a supply commitment? I think it's like everyone. If you if you can't, you know, there's fen uh, penalties and fees that you're that you're having to pay to the province. Yeah. So it's a lost opportunity cost that you can't get back if you have to pay a fine. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, people are making some very bad choices. Do you think other companies might be looking to unauthorized supply here? Well, I, I can't speak for them, but yeah. the people that, when we started looking through the process of how this got in here and some of the people who were a part of that, um, they are making claims that they'd been selling to other licensed producers. Significant players? I, I would say that uh, everyone who's got a supply problem m may have been impacted by this type of uh, activity. Now, and where do, do we even know much about where this came from? Was it uh, well, a organized have, crime? Well, we, we can't say that. All no. we know is there was a broker that was involved, and we don't know where the broker got the cannabis. Uh, but we supplied all that information to Health Canada in a redacted format. They are now taking a look at their opportunities of what they want to do with that information. Um, but So I don't know exactly where it was grown. But I can tell you, when we tested that product, uh, it had mold, yeast, E. coli, and her uh, pesticides and herbicides that were not allowed or not authorized. So we know that it didn't come from any place that was growing properly. Why, why wouldn't Health Canada just yank the license at Bonafide? Well, I think what I think what really the issue was is they knew like someone like us with a very good reputation in the industry was going to come out and say, "All right, let's let's do the right things and let's write the ship back the right way." I think that's what Health Canada really wants here is to make sure that we don't even put more uh, supply at, at risk and at issue. So uh, as long as you do the right thing the right way, you're communicating appropriately with the regulator. I think they're uh, willing to have a discussion around how to make sure that this facility continue operating. Remember, in the past, it had a stellar record, okay. a stellar record for everyone one of the uh, inspections and audits that had happened to it. It was only in the last seven months or so that they uh, started to see irregularities and a culture shift away from being uh, a proud uh, producer of cannabis to someone who is trying to fly by the seat of their pants, potentially. And apparently some of the employees tried to object and they were just shut down or ignored. Yeah, you know, I use the words bu bullied. They were bullied into doing what they knew was not the right thing to do, and that's unfortunate. Um, so uh, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, information that we could glean from emails and other interviews that we did that yeah, sure enough, they were going to lose their jobs if they didn't do what they were told, which is unfortunate. You don't want people to have to be in that, uh, in that position. Now, it's always easy to point fingers, just talking nationally, the rollout. I mean, it's innovative. No big country has ever done this before, so there's going to be glitches. But are there a couple of mistakes that were made, do you think? You know, I think overall in the process, uh, Health Canada got it, for the most part, right. I mean, can it always be better? Great, yes, it can be. But I think it's unfair to put all the blame on just how, how we want to actually start the process. It's always easier to start out with a tight operating procedure and then open it up, a yeah. regime, and then open it up. If you allow it to go crazy, like California or, or Colorado, now they're trying to right the wrong down there by putting in new processes to minimize the impact that you could have with a, a massive rollout of a product. So I think they're starting off tight and they can open it up if they so choose. Uh, but I think it was the right path to go. 
I got to ask you, do you think there will be social damage from this increased availability of cannabis? I don't think so. I think, I, I think that it's a, a fairly healthy uh, type of plant. But again, it all comes down to anything. If you eat too much food, eat too much anything, you can have a bad impact. But I think what it really is going to do, Canadians have been using it for a long, long time. It just hasn't been in the legal market. So I don't think we're changing uh, society at all. Fascinating stuff. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us, George. Thanks for having me here. George Robinson, a cannabis consultant uh, and also the boss of RavenQuest Biomed. Actually, it trades on the CSE, doesn't it? Canadian right. yep. Securities Exchange. I'm not sure if we have a chart standing by uh, to show that. Okay, we'll show that another time. But uh, anyway, on the C what's the symbol on the CSE? RQB. RQB. Oh, okay. Thanks very much, George.